Good afternoon. In a very last minute change of plan, we're starting today's ride in the medieval town of Batea in the Terra Alta. And we're just going to go and see some almond blossoms. Of course, we're not just going to see almond blossoms. We're going to the middle of nowhere via the entr entrance way to the ancient kingdom of Aragon. As I said, we've been here before. But it's still very, very lovely. So these would have been market stalls back in medieval times. I don't know where I'm going. That's not the first time. It's very, very steep. If you can see this. Anyway, we're just heading out of Batea. And the next town, in about 30 kilometers time, is Nonaspe. That's the cooperative cellar, as is this. For the uh, town of Batea, where they make the Cooperatives wine. It really makes sense if you're a very small producer to be part of the cooperative so you can get the best of the prices. You can jointly make your wine rather than trying to forge your own press or do your individual pressing. This makes a lot of sense. It's a chapter sport straight out in front of me. He's full of pigs, live pigs. Anyway, that's where we're going. Middle of nowhere. So today's ride was going to have been into the Penedes wine region, also known as Carva country. It's where the sparkling wine, Spanish uh, champagne, Carva, comes from. But I did think it was a bit pointless going somewhere which is one of the more verdant bits of Spain uh, in the middle of winter. It just would have been lots of dead sticks, like those. Whereas here, we're going into Aragon, and uh, that ought to be an awful lot of almonds. So this is the Almond Blossom Special. But if you did want to see some dead sticks, then get your fill here, because, to my mind at least, Batea is the capital of the Terra Alta wine region. And I say capital because my favourite wines from the Terra Alta come from Matea. So if I want to call it the capital then I'm going to. There were other reasons for not going to Penedes today and another, another one was that it's a beautiful stunning day and I didn't really want to be sat in the car for an hour and a quarter just so I could start riding. Um, it was going to be quite a big ride, but then when I very quickly worked out a route for today now, this one is both longer and more climbing, so I think I've shot myself in the foot there a little. But um, this one's much closer to home, and like I say, we should be seeing quite a lot of almond blossom when it's in blossom, rather than dead sticks, so I'm hoping it makes a a good choice. I have more reasons not to go that way. Hard to believe from what's happened already in this ride. Not feeling very chatty. So the other ride had an awful lot of really interesting things to talk about. Whereas this ride is mostly landscape. So once I've got my chatting out of my system, it's going to be a lot of landscapes today. And there's another reason <laughs> for not going to the Benedos today and that's I fancied a bit of solitude and uh, the Benedos is very very popular with day trippers and fellow cyclists whereas a bit of emptiness 
I'm heading for, would it be quite interesting if I actually start a, a car count and see how many we'll see for the entire day because there are three villages en route today for our 80 kilometers. The big one is the first one but that doesn't happen as I said for 30 kilometers. That has 950 people in it and the other two have around 350 people. On the other hand these are the only roads that lead to those villages so if anyone's out for the day well, we'll see them. So seven climbs today and we're on the first. Numbers two and five, five in particular, absolute killers. I've uh, driven up number five many, many times and it's the second and third gear in a car drive. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that one. First climb done, now on to the first descent. We're going to take everything very, very easy today. I'd like to say it's because my mum and dad worry when I say things like I'm trying to find a 100 kilometer an hour hill to go down but it's actually because I'm feeling a bit knackered which is another reason why we're not going to the Penedes today I've been uh, building this sort of fly free come deck with a third story sort of deck crow's nest so I can peer out at, uh, at the neighbours and think no so that I can, what, just somewhere nice, high up, so I can perch. But uh, it's tiring doing building work. I was an album builder. A lot of the pine trees have got mistletoe and uh, mistletoe always brings me to mind sorry my mind's wandering a little of Robin Hood Prince of Thieves the Kevin Costner classic from the 90s what I particularly liked about Costner's performance is how he truly got into uh, into the character because he talks about mistletoe and in an impeccable English accent says there's many a maid that's lost their virtue under that particular herb it's Oscar worthy and that's my performance let alone his and it uh, and his performance brings me to mind of also named Kate Winslet in the series Mayor of Easttown where she wasn't happy just by putting on a I think a New Jersey accent she researched the particular corner of New Jersey and did her character in that accent and apparently it was impeccable well it's Kate Winslet sorry it's a lovely view up here to think two hands might be an idea here yeah not for long go too slow look at this one Garmin's bleeping at me to tell me I'm off course how how oh <laughs> it's because it's a new road and it's trying to keep me on the old road which is a bit bendier than this one just realized the new road has cut out some of the corners. Go on, number one! 
a little disappointed. I didn't think we'd see any on this first leg. A lot of these hills are catching me unawares. There's nothing on the Garmin. And we've just reached the uh, valley of the Rio Algars, which is the border between Catalonia and Aragon. The most is away. And uh, I wasn't expecting to hit this many minor, as in short, but rather nasty little climbs. And as soon as you're over one, back down the other side, and then up, and then down. It's good for me. I think a little bit guilty about the weather today. It's absolutely glorious. There's supposed to be a high of 25, which is very unusual. Okay. I don't know why I swallowed a fly. Hope we won't die. Sorry about that. Um, 25 degrees, yoo-hoo. Also not a breath of wind. And in the UK, I think it's Storm Eustace, Eugene, Eugene, something like that hitting today. The forecast is appalling. And uh, well, we've got this, we've got swoopy, newly tarmac roads and beautiful scenery. Just a few almonds in blossom coming into uh, our first little town actually this is the big one 926 people non aspe non aspa depending on which side of the border you live i guess a pair of stalks making the most of that radio mast can barely see them it's a shame they're huge beasts So Nonaspe is on a promontory made by the two rivers, this one, the Mataranya, and the Algars, which we've seen already. And there it is up on the little rise behind us. Forgetting this train line is here. This is the one that goes past or well, very close to our house in our village, so I could actually get the train here and start from here. Let's do that. Now, some or all of that I've done before. But from here on in, it's uncharted territory. Sod's all for you. We're here too early for the almond blossom. An interesting looking knoll. And yes, I'm trying to take my mind off the, the climb. Disappointing almonds. Better. No cigar. Come on, almonds! That is some severe pruning. Either that or somebody really hates cherry trees. Three. I want to show you these olives. It is Spain after all. Right, it's Spain now, we're in Aragon anyway. About a week early, I think. I don't know if you can make it out, but the blossom is there in bud, the flower is in bud, but nothing's quite burst open yet. Yay! So we're um, just about to hit the main road and I say that because this road actually goes between two fairly large towns, Mechanentha and Maelia. Now if you've never seen this before, this is a trail of Processionary moth caterpillars. There they go. Nodding their little heads. 
Now, when disturbed, they give off a cloud of those hairs. And if you're an animal, they, uh, they get up into your nose and they cause such damage, the likely it is they'll die of it, cats, dogs. Um, humans, not great. But uh, I'm a little bit uh, wary uh, for them, for these little caterpillars. I don't think they're gonna make it across this busy road without getting squished. I must say, this is my sort of riding. It's not a soul about. The sun shining, not a breath of wind. It's 21 degrees at the moment. So far I've climbed 410 meters in 31 kilometers. And I haven't put the motor on yet. So it's just perfect, it really is. cycle all this way for almond blossoms and these are cherries so there's no way they can be out at the same time as here's a little wild almond at the front here bigger there's no way the cherries can be out already so these have been brought on with hormones the difference in price the cherries that uh, are about two weeks ahead of season they can be as high as I think it's 60 odd euros a kilo if you're the absolute first. And by the end of the season, that's dropped to about two, 160 per kilo, at which point it's hardly worth doing because it's quite uh, labor intensive, the picking of the fruit. But if you can get in early, it's worth an absolute fortune. But there's big risks involved because it usually rains in April here. And, uh, if it rains at the wrong time when the cherries are ripening they all split and it's very easy to lose the lot so if you go to the expense of using hormones then uh, you know you're taking quite a big risk but if it comes off it comes off big these ones haven't been treated it's the next field along and these are all cherries over here as well none of them in flower yet surprisingly high up here I thought the whole landscape would be like this. <laughs> so then we get one field. Beautiful almonds in full bloom. Love them. Smell fantastic. The hum of the bees. It's fantastic. The white against the green against the blue. Fantastic. such is the importance of these cherry crops increasingly now you see these either insect nets over the top like these ones or actual plastic sheeting to keep that rain off the actual individual plants that's our time on the busy road come to an end now turning off onto some minor road can't remember what it is BV1238451 or something Car six or car seven? Just coming past Bayonne, which is a pretty much brand new town because it used to live 
uh, down in the Ebro Valley. And they decided they were going to build a reservoir and they flooded that valley. And so the entire town was moved up on top of the hill where there's not really anything apart from Bayonne. But where we're going next is up a very nasty climb to a viewpoint where you can look down on the Ebro and still see Fayon where it used to be and it's old church sticking out of the water. Oops, that's if you make it to the top of a little hill being in top, which I just about did. There's a turning here somewhere for it. It's only a 700 metre climb, but it's an average of eight. And I've only just started it. Oh, he's a dirty liar. This is still the hill. I finished it 500 metres ago. Still going on. Oh, you'd have put me off. Oh, oh that's Fayon. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? You'll see in a minute where it used to be. Ah, that was about that. Unreal. And because it's Spain, it's got to be an ermita. Is this the church tower? Yeah, bro. bit in here, that's the Matarania that we crossed earlier, at um, Nonasp, that's where it joins the Ebro, and just with a two meet is the best roach fishing just about anywhere in Europe. Just thought I'd mention that to any roach fishermen out there, you can see it's pretty popular, most of these guys in boats are after the uh, catfish. So, um, for any of you who are waiting for my range extender video, it is coming. Uh, and it's going to be successful, which is really, really good news for people who haven't bought a range extender for six, seven, eight hundred dollars, pounds, euros yet, because this one costs about a hundred and five to double the battery capacity. And it's going to be stealthy, it's going to hide in a saddlebag, so you can keep two bottles on the bike, which you need on long rides after all, rides that you'd need the range extender for. So keep watching. That is pretty special, isn't it? Right, little descent and then a big climb. about this forest fire. Oh, this is all lush last time I came through. Oh, it's car number 10, by the way. Why did we do this? Let's 
a third of the way up now. Hard work. It's uh, currently at seven percent, and we're just going to the top bit. There's a series of three or four hairpins at the uh, at the top of the climb. Oh, amazingly, I've made it. Not amazing, I made it. That wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. It was really hard, but not as hard as it could have been. Maybe that's losing some weight. I don't know. But uh, I did use the motor. I didn't put it in the uh, top. I used it on green, which is the um, lowest setting most of the way. And then when I got really puffed towards the end there, I did put it in the medium. Which I think on the settings I've got now, gives me 150 watts, which was very, very welcome. So according to the Mali app, I've got 64% of the battery left and I've climbed 953 like meters. That. Does sort of imply that you could get a couple of thousand meters climbing out of the motor. But like I say, you'd be too tired to do that. But uh, it's still promising. Tractors count. Should have come this way first. Got all the almond footage, and you need never know that there wasn't any anywhere else. Busy. Seems La Pobla de Masaluca has been hoarding all of the uh, almond blossom. There's lots here. It's fascinating seeing these things unmoving. But love them or hate them, you've got to be impressed by the uh, scale of the engineering. Well, as you can probably tell from all those dead sticks, aka vines, that we're approaching Batea again. We're coming in on a back road which is uh, perfect because uh, we don't want to see any more cars we're up to 13 Fion really did us in I think most of them were around that bustling metropolis of 380 people oh I'm pretty tired now quite ready for it to be Batea this last road is quite a long one it's very up and down, but uh, it has meant that I haven't needed the motor. So now it's just changed to uh, orange, which means it's 50% um, uh, used, 50% less left, my mistake. And I've done uh, 1133 meters of climbing. So again, in theory, we're, um, we're up to 2,266 meters of potential climbing with the motor which uh, well that'd be fantastic wouldn't need a range extender at all I've got this tractor catching me up and I don't want him uh, I don't want him in front of me for the descent because he's gonna hold me up <laughs> so I'm trying to get away from him I think I held him off just had a bee land on my eyebrow I think he was, um, I think he was feeling frisky. It's the fonts where they used to do the washing. And apparently it's a back way into the town. I wouldn't fancy doing the washing in there now. It's quite an apt end to the video. It's a horrible hill. It's 13, it's gone 14%. It's 15%. I've got my max power on for the first time in the day and we're about 100 yards from the end. So on this horrible hill, I bid you a good day and until next week, thanks for watching. Oh, perfect. There we are.
in the moon platter again. Peace.